Thank <laughs> you. 
das dann gut. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. You believe in me, though he died, yet shall he live. Whoever live and believe in me shall never die. For I know that my Redeemer lives and at last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin of dust been destroyed, then without my flesh I shall see God. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be the Lord both of the living and of the dead. Weeping men joy for the night, but joy comes in the morning. God is our refuge and strength and a present help in the time of trouble. And we have our programs. I believe everyone has our programs, even though we might be few in numbers. But let me put all of our voices together to celebrate the life of our dear beloved sister and our pastor now. I think in few in numbers we can do a mighty job. Amen? Amen. All right. So the first song on the program is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What can we have in Jesus? Trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Some glad no honey when this life is over.
on behalf of my family, I would like to begin by thanking everyone who is present here today, physically and virtually. And I will also, for those who have sent their condolences, we have received countless phone calls, emails, texts, thoughtful prayers. They have been both comforting during this difficult time and have been a reminder of the impact that Auntie Martha had on many others. My name is Vanessa, and I am one of Martha Boswell's many nieces. Auntie Martha did not have any children of her own, so her nieces and nephews were her children. As you imagine, Auntie Martha was the coolest aunt any child could have asked. She treated our nieces and nephews equally, giving us opportunities to experience island hopping, trips to the zoo, the botanical gardens, ex museums, etc., were a regular thing. She was also known as the Secret Santa. Every Christmas Eve, Auntie Martha filled her travel bags and her suitcases with gifts for the entire family. None was left behind. She journeyed from Port of Spain to Mayaro to ensure that all the nieces and nephews of there had a happy Christmas as well. As all the nieces and nephews waited eagerly to open their gifts. We weren't her only loved ones. Auntie Martha had a strong connection with her brothers and sisters and relatives who learned a lot from her and she from them. She made herself well known to every member of our extremely large family. I am thankful for Auntie Martha because my cousins are pretty much aware of who we are related to. Cool, cool, cool lady. Auntie Martha was strong-minded and believed in her independence even up to late stages of her life. She was strong and believed that she possessed the ability to get the task done on her own. Auntie Martha was a vibrant member of many groups and organizations. She spent over 20 years as a member of the St. John's Ambulance, where she was awarded a long service award. She was the employee of the Port of Spain General Hospital for over 40 years, where her time was spent conducting duties as a ward's maid. Auntie Martha, was, Auntie Martha found so much pride in her accomplishments. Her sense of humor and her passion for success connected her to her colleagues that she, that she always spoke highly of. Auntie Martha had a drive for adventure, and she loved taking cruises and touring the world. She was filled with life. You will never forget your contagious laugh and your lighthearted spirit. Auntie Martha, we will all miss you dearly. One attribute you will be remembered for is for your eternal love for your family. That's why we say thank you, Auntie Martha. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, as we go over the program, is there anyone that uh, have a tribute, a word, a fond memory? At this time, the opportunity is given to you. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Stefan and I'm one of Martha's nephew from Niaro and that's my mother in the corner there and my aunt. Vanessa said it all. Auntie Martha was everything that she said. You know, she was fun loving, she was a night at the party, she loved to travel. And she had lots of stories. You know, every time she came up, she had a different story, some place that she went, the people that she met, the things that she did. And for sure she would pack the bags and bring gifts for everybody. Um, you know, a lot of us attend funerals and we hear a lot of things said about people. 
but at the end of our days, all of us, the important thing is the impact that our life has on the people that we encounter. And undoubtedly, anti-matter impacted a lot of people. Not just the family members, but people she worked with, people she was in organizations with, people she met as she traveled around the world. And if we have to take anything away from this sad moment, it will be the fact that she lived her best life. She lived her best life and she made all of us happy. And if that's all that we can take away from this very sad moment, let that be it. But she lived her very best life. She made all of us happy. She did it her way. She was fiercely independent. She did it her way. And she enjoyed doing it. So I don't think there's much else I could say based on what Vanessa had said, apart from thanking everybody who would have sent condolences to the family. Um, it's a tough time and we all work through it, we get over it. And we know that she would have touched you in different ways, the people here, the people looking online. And thank you very much. Oh, meet me by the river someday. Meet me by the river, not far away. Oh, when my Lord shall come, oh, I'll be here. them as her own children. No matter is something like me. Of all my nephews and my nieces, uh, they are my children. The parents can hit them, can't school them, leave that for me to do. 
uh, I don't them up too much because I get in on them, you know. And um, and I believe they can sell it for some other one. Don't make sure now. I don't want to go in anywhere well against something at all. So we see that Martha abducted her nieces and nephews and treated them as her own. And she made sure that the needs were met. And I sure she did the same thing for the great nieces and the great nephews coming up as well. So now there is a void that is left in the hearts of the family, her sisters, her brothers. And I'm realizing it's a close-knit family like mine, and I thank God for that. But I should say like ours. I thank God for that. And we have to understand that, and I always preach this in every funeral and every time I have an opportunity that God did not create a religion. Your religious persuasion has nothing to do God with God. God cares nothing about your religious belief. God created family. And we have a saying that the family that prays together stays together. And Martha made sure that she was in connection with every member of her family far and wide. That's what family is supposed to be doing. When we live in a dispensation now that if I call, let me just talk about the call her name. If I call Hyacinth, Hyacinth is calling me. That's not family. Sometimes you don't know the need, you don't know what Hyacinth is going through. And we're seeing that we live in a selfish world. And this corona pandemic is showing up people ready for who they are. Family ought to be looking out for one another. I have five aunts. And my five aunts on my father's side, they have no friends. So I asked Tante Annette one day, I said, Tante Annette, why you all you never have a friend? She said, because mother made 10 boys, 10 girls. We have enough friends in our family. She said, my brothers are my friends, my sisters are my friends. I don't need no other friend. I said, OK, I got the point. As important that family look out for one another, the spice of, we will always have a little isms and schisms along the way. That's OK, that's life. None of our fingers are the same size, same length. They are all different. So is life. God created family. So that means that if I am an Anglican and you're an open Bible, that has nothing to do with, with what family is all about. And I always say that every religion divides family is not of God. I stand Hold on saying that. Because God is not about religion. God is about love. The religion of God is love. When Jesus came, he said, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy might. And the second is like unto it, Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. This thing, this thing, this thing. And if we cannot love our family, if we cannot love our sisters, our brothers, that God placed in our life that we grew up with, how can we love God? If we cannot love our neighbor, how can we love God? He said, how can you love one that you cannot see, but they are hating those that you interact with every day of your life? Loving someone doesn't mean you're hugging them and kissing them up every day and saying, I love you, that's deceitful. Loving someone is thinking about them in your thoughts. Setting up prayer of hope and comfort and encouragement for them without their even knowing. Loving someone is picking up the phone any other given day just to say, Hey, Saint Egil, I love you. Simple. Love is action. Love is doing. Love is movement. 
Don't tell me you love me. Show me you love me. And Martha expressed that love in her action towards her family. So in the midst of the bereavement, I tell people, born, cry, perform, goes from my grandfather from my funeral, I perform. Ain't nobody can listen to me. And I did his funeral. My grandfather, I, I grew with my, with my grandparents, my grandmother passed away, Archbishop Sheila Jordan passed away just in February this year. And I asked God for about two years to prepare me, because this is a great woman, prepare me, don't let me act the fool for that woman's funeral. Lord, help me to do the funeral perfect, stand up straight, do the performance, do what I have to do, do the rituals, do everything. And I cried every day coming up to her funeral. That's the woman that had me alive today. And on the day of the funeral, that was it. She came and she took those stairs away and I was able to perform her, her, her final rites to me and my cousin. And we did that funeral. And I'm saying all this because I grew up with my aunts, I grew up with my uncles, so I, I understand it, and I, and I understand togetherness and the love that Martha shared with her, with her family. And if we can truly share that love abroad, according to the songwriter, what a wonderful world this will be. Because at the end of the day, your money not going with you. Your worldly possession not going with you. Whatever you may acquire along your journey not going with you. What is going with you is your record. How did you live on earth? How did you interact with each other? Sometimes we feel because we have some money, we eat, we reach. We look down at people. And then at the end of the day, we all look down at you. That's the reality of life. I remember when this corona thing started last year, a man in Italy, a millionaire, probably a billionaire, I don't know, his wife and his son, only child, got it and died. He got up to the top of his, 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 his hotel building. <coughs> and because of the grief, and there's no one there to comfort him, he committed suicide because in his mind he couldn't live without his wife and his son. And we have seen that this pandemic, I have never, I had never thought in my existence that I have, I have been living through something like this. Where now this evil thing now, it's evil, I don't care, it's evil. It's separating family and friends. But you can't go and look for your mother, you can't go and look for your sister, you can't look for your brother. You have to call, you know, you can't that interaction we used to have, we have it no more. I go home by my aunt the other day. She said, Oh, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Lies on me from head to toe. My child again lies on just that bail with a good nice auntie and lies on me from head to toe. She said, Lies on, she said, COVID. I said, Okay, auntie. So I went back, buy some lies on. No, when they come back, me, I like, said, No, one time, I said, Oh, auntie, COVID. You know, so it, it is a terrible time that we are living in. But here what the scripture is saying that nothing must be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So in spite of what we are living in today, it's scripture is still saying we're going to reach out and touch somebody. It ought to be a physical touch. It don't have to be a physical touch, a phone call. Says Gil, how are you going? Everything okay? Mommy, how are you going? Daddy good? Brother, how are you going? Niece, how are you going? Do like how, how Martha do it. Nephew, how are you going? Everybody good? How are them children going? Do they need anything? This is a testing time to see if love is real. So we may have social distancing, but there's no distance in prayer. There's no distance in love. There's no distance in kindness. There's no distance in caring. And there's no distance in loving. 
So as we celebrate her life today and her fond memories that she has left behind, It's all about what you leave. I'm not talking about money here. Because money can't buy love. I just always say that, but if you give me something, I would love to have it. They don't just go buy love. I'm not talking about what she possessed, what she had, what she acquired. I'm talking about the love. And somewhere along the line that your sorrow, my dear, will turn into joy. Because when you remember her fond memory, someone I said, I think the nephew said she was the life of the party. She was the life of the gathering. She was the life of the family. It is important, and I'll continue stressing those even online. Love your family. It is important. That you be in connection all times with your family, near or far. I have an uncle on the mother's side, and my, grandma, and my father's side is 10, and my mother's side is 13. And when I know those age, my grandmother died at 99, so those that didn't have no TV, not in black and white, so I have nothing else to do but to make plenty children. I see the, the family have an old one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. Wow. So they come from that era too. You know? And I have an uncle Oliver. And we have family, Moruga, Mayaro, Point, before Corners Arima. And when Uncle was mobile, he made sure that he contact every for me know there's a family, no uncle. For me there's a family, you know there's a family, no uncle. For me, they we probably have hundreds of people. All they know not be family. But so, we family boy. How to be some alone in life? Somewhere. You understand? We are our God. We are the, the most important thing. We are the family of God. That what is connect us. Being the family of God. Being the children of God. Being the servants of God. Being the inheritance of God. So I'm here to comfort the family this afternoon to let them know there is hope. And the life that Martha has lived, you know that I hear the, the name Martha, it reminds me of Mary and Martha. When Lazarus died, you know, and Martha being the bold one, she said, Lord, if you was here, my brother Lazarus wouldn't have died. And she said unto her, Martha, do you believe that I am the resurrection of the life? She said, Lord, I believe. So, uh, so something in me, I think in that this matter, I have a belief in God. A strong sense of belief and spirituality. And if we trust God for who he is, we know that she's in a better place. And if we live the life that she lived, looking out for her family with love, we too will meet her in the street by and by. So we have the last song on the program. And then we will stand, we will clap, and we will sing. And we have the last viewing. I think you all, uh, the commission at Bellow, so you all will view as well. Of course, they will may have, <coughs> because of the restrictions, we are limited. Imagine we are limited to more of our dead. Church is closed, five. If you're doing virtual worship, so only five persons will come to church. So these big, these big mega churches close. Are we really living the life God wants us to live? Because the end time is here. I grew up here in these old Baptist people say the end time. about these old, but every time it's the end time, end time, end time. Now I'm the end time. Now we are all in the end time. It is the beginning of song. And that's when we're going to carry our church with us. And I told my membership, I don't need a church to praise God. I can praise God anywhere. I home in my home, I home in my house, and I get up in the morning, I start to praise God one time, I put on my gospel music, and I start to worship one time. When anything hit me, I ring my bell, I throw my water, I say, praise the Lord, I, I start to cook my food. 
in the evening time, I, I don't need church to praise God. I don't need a building to praise God. I need myself to praise God. I don't need company to praise God. I can praise God. I can listen to that, that, that song I will show from the I can do that all by myself. I can praise my God all by myself. I don't need company to praise God. Because suddenly I have the company not on mine and one praising God. So I, when I get up in the morning, I give my hour worship and devotion, and I start the days when the devil has provoked me sometimes, you know, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But other than that, I worship my God. I don't need nobody to help me sing. I don't know what to read. I can read my Bible myself and, and I sit up and I meditate and the Holy Spirit will interpret what the word of God said to me. It is important that we gather. The word said we must gather, but don't make it an excuse not you're not a missing church. You're crazy about it. We are the church. We are the temple of God. We are the walking church. We are the movement. Without us, there's no church. There's no building. It's just an empty building. So understand the people. Worship God. Every opportunity you have in your life, worship God. Because the Bible says, I want to close, but the Bible says that the one that the book will be taken away from us. So what do we do then? Will we lose hope? Or will we have the word of God written on the tablets of our hearts? So we're about to have the last song. Please stand and help. We will sing, we will clap, we will rejoice. And leave this place feeling a little better. A little better. Sorrow is a hell of a thing. Trust me, I know. Grief is a giving of my heart attack. Trust me, I know. I've been there and done that. But then there is God. Then there is God. Right? No, <coughs> that's a hard that's what I don't do right. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved of the earth shall gather on the other shore, and the road is full of the flowers
As we stand at this time, please. I see your hand. I want to use that. Screw the thing. For as much as please, Almighty God, and of His great mercy. Can we have some silence, please? For as much as please, Almighty God, and of His great mercy, to receive unto Himself the soul of our beloved sister, here departed. We therefore commit her body to be consumed, dust to dust. Ashes to ashes. In short, certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our earthly body and may be unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, henceforth blessed indeed, says the Spirit that they may rest from their labor, for their deeds shall follow them. Let us pray. Almighty God, who by the death of thy dear son Jesus Christ had destroyed death, by, the rest in the, by his rest in the tomb had sanctified the graves of the saints, and by his glorious resurrection had brought life and immortality to light. Receive, we beseech thee, on fringe thanks for that victory over death on the grave which he had obtained for us and all who sleep in him. Keep us in everlasting fellowship with all those that wait on thee in heaven and with those that surround thee in heaven, in union with him, who is the resurrection and the life, who liveth and reigneth with thee, world without end. Holy Spirit, ever one God. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. So we have come now to the conclusion of the service, the celebration of life for our sister Martha. But, uh,